listeners, welcome to Studio NIOS. I am Dr. Pooja Chopra. Today we will discuss discovery approach of teaching science. Good science education is true to the true to the child, true to life, and true to science. NCF 2005. Science is a dynamic, expanding body of knowledge covering ever new domains of experience. Science is ultimately a social endeavor. Science is knowledge and knowledge is power. With power can come wisdom and liberation. Science education should be a joyful experience, encouraging learners to engage and explore the world around it and harmonizing it with it. In traditional learning process, the teacher transmits the fact and assumes the students as passive receptors of knowledge. This teaching learning process is teacher-centered approach. In this approach, students viewed science learning as accumulation of prefabricated knowledge or facts, which is to be stored in memory by the process of rote learning. In traditional approach, student has nothing to do. They just have to listen and wrote memorize this, the facts. Research in science education has shown traditional science education, even at its best, develop competence but does not encourage invent inventiveness and creativity. Hence, a paradigm shift is needed in teaching of science in India. Res researchers have has advocated the constructivist approach of teaching science. This is the main difference between traditional learning environment and new learning environment which is student center. In this slide, you can see the difference between traditional learning environment and new learning environment which is constructivist approach. In teacher learning environment, you can easily see the teacher is at the center stage. He is lecturing, he is explaining, he is asking questions and what is the role of the students? Students are just the poor acceptors. They do not have much options. They have to listen to the teacher and wrote memorize the fact. They do not have an active role to play in this classroom. Whereas in the new learning environment, which is student center, it is constructivist environment. In this environment, you can easily see that students are learning according to their own style. They are not bound by the time, the constraint of a typical teacher-centered classroom. They are free. They are free to engage, free to explore, free to ask questions and free to find answers. This is what the new learning environment which has been advocated by the researchers worldwide. American psychologist B. F. Skinner, 1971, has rightly said, you can teach anybody anything provided you know how to teach. This highlights the importance of pedagogy methods of teaching at all levels of education. Hence, method of teaching science is very important. Let us first discuss about the concept of method and then we will move on to discuss discovery method of teaching science which is a constructivist based method in detail. Now what is method? The definitions of method are given below. Method is the relationship established by an educational institution with a group of participants for the purpose of systematically diffusing knowledge among them. Henderson 1963 observed a pattern that is a set of common properties that a set of behavior manifest will be called as a method. According to Browdy, 1963, methods refer to the formal structure of a sequence of acts commonly denoted by instruction. These definitions clearly indicated two important aspects of the method. First, method is a systematic organization of the content. Second thing is method imparts knowledge and methods of acquiring it. In short, the concept of method can be stated in terms of a mathematical equation 
as method of teaching is equal to content plus processing of content. Hence, method of teaching is CK that is content knowledge and another is processing of content that is PCK pedagogical content knowledge. Now, what is this pedagogical content knowledge? Pedagogical content knowledge is the knowledge which describe how this particular content should be taught to the learners. What are the strategies adopted by the teacher? Now, we will discuss in detail about discovery approach of teaching science. What is this discovery approach? Discovery approach is recognized as constructivist approach. Now, what is this constructivist approach? Constructivist approach put emphasis on construction of knowledge through interaction with the environment where learner negotiates meaning with the other. In this approach, learner is emphasized, learner is in focus because it is the learner who is constructing knowledge along with the help of his teacher. Discovery approach provides a learning context where knowledge construction processes occurs during processes where learners have hands-on experiences to construct meanings. Discovery learning stresses that learners construct knowledge on the basis of new information as collected by them in an explorative learning environment. Hence, discovery learning is focused on learners that learners are able to construct their knowledge provided they are given an appropriate environment. Hence, discovery approach is a method of inquiry based instruction. Discovery learning believes that it is best for learners to discover facts and relationships for themselves. Hence, in discovery approach, learner is the main is at the central stage. The main proponent of this category of methods are Jerome Bruner, Hilda Taba, Robert Davies and many others. According to Bruner, discovery is a process. Discovery is a way of approaching problems rather than a product or a particular item of knowledge. Many educators developed instructional strategies based on ideas proposed by Bruner. Hence, discovery approach is based on the ideas of Jerome Bruner. The discovery approach is a type of teaching that encourages students to take a more active role in the learning process by answering a series of questions or solving problems designed to introduce a journal concept. In this approach, students made a first attempt. There are three types of methods that are included under discovery approach. One is open discovery method, second is guided discovery method and third is deductive discovery method. Now, we will discuss all these methods in detail. First, begin with open discovery method. Open discovery method is generally used by scientists worldwide. It uses inductive method of reasoning. The learners draw on his or her own past experiences and existing knowledge to discover facts and relationships and new truths to be learned. In guide, whereas in guided discovery method, example rule pattern is followed. In this method, the teacher starts with the example of the rule and then the students generate rule on the basis of similarities and differences between different examples presented to them by the teacher. In guided discovery method, it is assumed that students need at the some stage the guidance of the teacher. Since the moves used in the discovery method are the same as those used in uh, expository approach, the distinguishing factor between the two is the position 
of the assertion moves or the statement of the rule move. Hence, guided discovery method can be defined as a sequence of moves in which the assertion move, if at all appears, appears late in the sequence. The typical sequence of discovery le learning approach is as under CR, then JR, then SR and then AR. Now, we will discuss what all this CR, JR, SR and AR means. SR is the statement of the rule. A statement of rule under study may be made by assertion move by the student or the teacher. Then clarification of the rule. Through the use of examples, demonstration, evidence of proof, discussions of sub rules, CR is given. Then there is a justification of the rule. This move identifies the veracity of that fact which is under study, cross proofs, opinion of experts, etc. Then last is the application of the rule. In order to ensure that the students are able to take real learned rules in other settings, there must be some form of practice. That is, student must be able to apply that rule in their environment. Let us study by the following example, where in discovery methods have been applied to a unit from six standard signs. First one is CR, that is classification of the rule. At this stage, the teacher will make available all the materials required for conducting the experiments related to miscibility or immiscibility of two liquids. In this, the topic is the teacher wants to teach the concept what is miscibility and what is immiscibility and how different liquids are miscible or immiscible in each other. The concept is that though the first stage is clarification of the rule. The teacher should provide data sheet wherein students are required to record the data or observation of the experiment. So, in the first step at this stage, the teacher will make available all the material required for conducting the experiment. Then second is materials required. In this experiment, materials required are test tubes, liquids such as alcohol, milk, kerosene, lemon juice, mustard oil, vinegar, coconut oil, buttermilk and many other. The choice of the resources will depend on the local availability of the material. The teacher will start demonstrating the experiment relating to the mixing of two liquids. Here is one more option available to the teacher as a providing experimental kits to each student asking the students to write their observation in the data sheet. So, there are two options either a teacher can demonstrate that experiments to the whole class or the second option is they can provide the science kit therefore, through which students can do the experiment themselves. Then there is a data sheet for recording observations. In this data sheet, it is mentioned there are various serial number, then there is a liquid 1 and liquid 2 and then observa observations made by the students. Let us take the first example. Liquid 1 is water, liquid 2 is milk. What will student observe? In this, there are two options again, either the teacher will demonstrate mix water into liquid or the teacher ask the student to do this experiment and observe what they are seeing it. Next is through the then they can repeat this experiment by using different methods. They can use uh, kerosene oil, alcohol, mustard oil, coconut oil or anything that is available to them. Students are free to select any two liquids provided they do not choose harmful liquids such as concentrated sulfuric acid, concentrated HCl, the students should classify 
miscible and immiscible liquids in the context of water. So, a teacher has to provide some guidelines that teacher that the student has to find in context of water only. Then comes the second step. First step is CR classification of the rule. Then second is JR justification of the rule. The in this stage, the students should be encouraged by the teacher to justify by changing the sequence of the mixing of liquids. The students should generalize as if liquid A is miscible with B, then B is miscible with A. Third stage is statement of the rule. Through interaction between the teacher and the students, the students will generate the rule related to miscibility and immiscibility of two or more liquid. The teacher should help the students to verbalize the rule. Now, students have themselves based on their experiment have found the rule. The role of the teacher, teacher in this stage is this should help the student to formally state the rule. Next is application of the rule. Students do the experiment first and then based on the observation the students can generate rules. For example, the students can take more than two liquids and mix with each other and observe. Next is the student mixes A with B, B with C and A with C and then generate rule. In this stage, students have comprehended the rule. Now, they are able to apply this rule in their life. The students can discuss in small groups the following questions and report in the class. First question can be, what would happen if milk would not have been miscible with water? They must have been observed that milk and water are easily miscible. So, they can answer, now they can easily answer that question, what would happen if milk would not have been miscible with water? Second question could be, what would happen if kerosene would not have been miscible with diesel and petrol? The example uh, given above is of guided discovery method. Some cues have been provided, but the thirst is always from the example to the rule. And then, to rule is to be generated by the students. So, we have seen that in discovery approach, students has to be do the major role. Teacher is only providing cues. Teacher is only a facilitator. Now, we will discuss advantages of discovery approach. As we have discussed earlier that discovery approach is student centered. Hence, it is very interesting. Process of teaching is more important than product of teaching. This creates interest among the students with respect to the subject of the student of the study. As you as uh, you are seeing that students themselves are conducting the experiment, so they are curious to know whether this liquid A is miscible with liquid B or not. All the time, the students may not be able to generate rule and put in a verbal form and here comes the role of the teacher. He has to help them, he has to facilitate them. In the beginning of the discovery lesson, the teacher should help in developing the rule. As students exposed to such lessons, they will learn to generate rules very easily. So, in the beginning, teacher has to take the lead, they, ha they has to guide, but when students become used to this type of learning, they will become, they will learn how to generate rules very easily. They become self-dependent, they do not require teacher all the time. They can construct their knowledge, hence this discovery approach is constructivist approach.
where at the center stage are the students. So, the first advantage of this discovery approach is it is interesting to the students. So, in the beginning of discovery lesson, the teacher should help in developing the rule. As students are exposed to such lessons, they will learn to generate rules very easily. So, in the first stage, teacher has to take the lead, but generally students will know how to generate the rules. Hence, the ability to analyze, organize knowledge in attacking problems is developed because students are actively involved in the learning experiences created by the teacher. Hence, this approach makes students an active learner and increase their reflective and analyzing abilities. Next point is joyful learning. Student enjoy learning because they themselves discover knowledge. In the process of play, learn, they grow, they, uh, they explore and hence they enjoy this type of instruction. Interactive classroom, there is, a, there is always a const constant interaction between content, teacher and the student. This results into development of information processing abilities of the students. Now coming back to limitations, although the teacher is moderately monitoring the teaching learning process, if it is not properly handled, then it may lead to the following limitation. Time consuming, students may not progress beyond basic notions in any discipline. Frustration may be there with low ability students because they may or may not discover early relationship. A lot of efforts should be put in by the students and the teacher. The schools should have enough resources to be provided to the students. All the teachers may not be comfortable with this met method and this becomes a limitation. Costly methods. Of course, it is a costly method in terms of time and other resources. It is generally found that teaching by discovery is more effective for achieving higher level objectives and retention of the content taught by discovery method than that of an expository method. Hence, to conclude, we can say that discovery method is a much better method. It is based on a constructivist paradigm. It promotes deep learning, promotes metacognitive step skills, it develops problem solving skills, creativity of students. It promotes students engagement. Thank you.